Well, good day to you. It is February the 13th, and I hope wherever you are, you're having a wonderful day. And hopefully, if there's somebody expecting something from you come tomorrow, you have gotten on that and gotten it done. Because if you don't, it might not be there tomorrow. Because <laughs> I tell you, the stores were pretty much jammed up yesterday. So anyway, hope you're doing well. My name is Gary Willing. Hopefully, you have a good Valentine's Day tomorrow if you uh, are somebody that celebrates that holiday. Now, um, as I always like to point out before I start every video, because we don't talk about the Valentine's Day usually, we talk about my trade of the Masters of Wisdom. You might not know anything about what I'm talking about, but want to know more. Well, I've included links in the description portion of these videos that take you to websites that give you background information about my trade of the Masters of Wisdom, why they're here, about the many miracle signs that I think are evidence of the return of the awaited teacher to um hit about his priorities and those kind of things so that's why i put them in there you want to know more about this because you already know something about this educate yourself better about it by doing the exact same thing you want to jump into the fray and join the discussion you're welcome to do that too people post comments post their questions in the comments section email me at search for signs at mill.com i love it when people send me links to articles that uh, talk about this in some way so i like to post them up on facebook and i've even had some people repost articles that I put up on Facebook. So I want to thank you guys for doing that as well. But Ashawak Wardardi uh, and uh, Chad DeLanier were the only ones that commented. And I really do want to thank you guys for commenting since the last time I put a video up. Unfortunately, there's really nothing for me to discuss based on your comments. But uh, I do thank you nonetheless. Now, I wanted to read an article coming from Benjamin Crum's Master entitled A New Freedom. Now, the title in and of itself is really what the, the article is about, of course, but if you just read that, you wouldn't really know what he meant until after I read the article. But I wanted to say something about uh, reading this article to you first. Okay, First and foremost, it's always better for you to read uh, Benjamin Crumb's Master's articles yourself and not have somebody read it to you. You can for free by going to the Share International site. Link is in the description. This article might not be there, but there are other articles like it, and you can really get a good sense of what the masters are about, what their priorities are for humanity, what Maitreya really means for humanity, and those kind of things. And I think you really can't get it better than anywhere else because it's coming from one of these masters. It's very simple, easy to read, but you can internalize the words better if you read them yourself. The other thing, too, is I don't like to analyze what he says after I read it. I'd rather you just leave you with his thoughts, let you think about it, and hopefully inspire you to go and read some of these articles for yourself on the Share International site. But let's say you didn't do that. You just wanted to kind of just listen to it and that's it. Well, it's better for you to, to listen to it and then just kind of internalize it rather than having somebody kind of, well, this is what I think he meant about that. Because I could be wrong too, right? But I wanted to set up the article first because he's talking about the economies of the world and what it really means for humanity when these economies finally collapse. Now, Maitreya has st stood on firm ground with his prediction that the stock markets were eventually going to collapse. And it's been decades, actually, since he made that prediction. And there have been times where it's kind of teetered and almost came over and times that it went way, way down, but it, it didn't go all the way down enough, or I guess, or whatever. So we're still kind of in this flux of Economies up, economies down, economies up, economies down. And of course, from time to time, and we're getting into this point now where people are expecting something to happen to the economies. They're expecting it to go down because it's been just going up for like a terror for the last, what, eight or nine years now, I guess, or maybe a little bit more than that. And so there's a reason why they went up. And there's a reason why they went up after 2008 the way that they did. And I'm going to discuss both those things. But you might be hearing, as I've been hearing on YouTube and Facebook and people's reels talking about how you too can profit from this downturn in the economy. And this is not one of those videos. This is really to talk about the, the, the real reason why, the, the spiritual reason why we're going through this problem, what it means for humanity that we're going through this problem, and is it going to be as bad as everyone says it's going to be? And, you know, are we going to go right back to the way it was? Okay, that's the other thing. So the, the reason why we are experiencing the economies that we are and we have been for the last few decades 
according to Maitreya, is because the energy that it was used to build and maintain and sustain the Cold War, the competition between the Eastern Bloc nations and the allies or the NATO nations of the United States and Western Europe and so forth, right? That buildup over decades took energy. And when it abruptly ended, and, it, and Maitreya predicted the ending of the Cold War too, by the way, before it happened, but when, it, when that prediction's already come to pass, but when that happened, Maitreya said that the energy that was used to build up all the arms and, and keep the competition going and those kind of things, circled the world several times and found a new womb. And the womb was the stock market. And it started to boom. And it happened in the late 80s. The 90s were known for just this economic boom with the tech bubbles and all that kind of stuff, right? And then once we get to 2000, it was up and down and up and down. I mean, it was almost daily, maybe weekly or whatever. The stock market would go way up and way down and way up and way down. And then in 2008, it collapsed. Now, it was, it was, always, re it was always referred to by the, the talking heads as a downturn in the economy, but it collapsed. And people really were, were hurting really bad in 2008 based off of that. Now, it's not, this isn't the article that I'm about to read, but Benjamin Krem's master in one of his articles talked about the, the stock market crash of 2008 and said if it just would been, he, it hadn't been decided in which direction it was gonna go when he wrote this article. So he said there was a possibility that it would just go down and just keep going down and down and down and just eventually totally collapse. And it would have been tough, but it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't have been as tough as what really happened. And he was saying the other option that could have happened is the stock markets will go up to even higher highs and he said, if that happens, then the pain and the suffering of humanity will be even worse because the, the, of what will be tied into it at that point. Now, I've said this before sarcastically, but it's true. You know, um, Reagan and Trump were two good examples of this. There were U.S. presidents who I consider to be roosters taking credit for the dawn. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, Ronald Reagan, in, in, at the end of the Cold War, said to Gorbachev, tear down that wall, Mr. Gorbachev, right? Which the wall had already been torn down, by the way. But it wasn't because of Reagan's doing. There was cosmic reasons and cosmic forces as to why the, 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 the um, Cold War was ending. And it, like I said, it wasn't directly a result, a result of Reagan, but he tried to take credit for it politically. And same thing with Trump. The reason why the stock market went way up after 2008, even under Obama, which he never gave credit to Obama for that either, and it wasn't Obama's re fault, or it wasn't Obama's doing that the stock markets were going up. This was a direct result of the forces of darkness doing this, according to the masters. They were, they were putting the energy and the force and the money into it to get it to go back up to even higher highs. But <clears throat> it will not be sustained for much longer. And this is what I think people are picking up on, that you know, this has been going on for a little while, too long, right? We've gone past the average time that a bull market would last, according to most talking heads on TV, to where now they're very concerned that we're headed for something else, which is a downturn, right? Well, then they start talking about, well, if you listen to my channel, listen to me, I got all the answers, I'll help you out, I'll make sure that you profit where other people totally are decimated by this economy, right? And of course, with people's fear, they turn to those kind of people, course probably try to give them money to for the for the better courses that they give for, that's not free and those kind of things well so is it going to be tough yes according to the masters the economies going down are going to hurt a lot of people unfortunately it's going to hurt more of the people in the poorer nations first and harder than it is in even the the wealthier nations like the western european nations in the united states unfortunately but it's still going to be a tremendous amount of suffering around the world but here's the other thing According to the masters, it's not about us, some people making money and some people not making money. It's about humanity coming together as one. As crazy as that sounds, as utopian as that sounds, that's really the, not only the potential or the possibility, but the destiny of humanity to do, to come together. And it won't happen when the markets are ruling the world. So the markets have to People have to wake up to the unreality of the markets, and I think that that's where we're headed right now. It'll be painful and, and, and hard for some who are really tied into the markets, financially, emotionally, you know, 
perhaps even spiritually and those kind of things are tied into the market so much that that's their life, that of course it will be tough for them when the markets collapse. Other people will be hard, but not quite as tough as that. And other people might not care because they don't have any money in the markets or whatever, right? But be that as it may, it's about humanity come together as one. In fact, a lot of people question the reality of Maitreya because they haven't still seen him on TV. I believe that this is probably the reason why he has not popped his head above the horizon enough to where humanity can start to recognize him easier is because we are still dependent, relied on, tied into the markets in the way that we're doing. Maitreya says that the collapse of the markets will bring humanity not only to its knees, but its senses. And we'll see that we've been living this unreality. This, we've been living in this unreal world where everything's based off of profit. Everything's based off of money. And it shouldn't be like that. That's not what we're built to do. That's where this new freedom comes in. So hopefully you've listened to it this far. I want to read Benjamin Crumb's Master's article. Again, it's better to read these yourself than to have me read it to you. But for the time being, let me read it to you. And hopefully it will inspire you to go read these for yourself. But A New Freedom by Benjamin Crumb's Master. With wonderment, we, your elder brothers, watch the extraordinary spectacle now being enacted by those who administer the economic and financial affairs of the nations. As the stock markets teeter uncontrollably under the twin onslaught of greed and fear, the quote-unquote men of money now seek to bolster their power by combining the major markets into one. <clears throat> this, they assume, will strengthen all. In our view... This will but hasten the total collapse of the gambling casinos of the world. Now as one, the bourses will react to the winds, blowing now hot, now cold, which fan the fever of speculators and drive them to the edge. The, quote, buffers of dispersion are being abandoned and not then can halt the spiraling fall. When that happens, men will see the folly of this, tawdry enterprise and turn to face reality for the first time. When, too, this happens, Maitreya will begin the process of his open emergence and speak directly to the people in their confusion and despair. He will show men that for far from losing all, they have gained a new freedom, the loss only of the glamour and lure of riches and power. When men hear him speak, they will realize that right relationship is the true reality they seek. And emboldened and purified, they will set in motion the process of sharing and justice. Thus will they guarantee the peace for which men yearn and which for so long has eluded them. Maitreya will show that when men act from the heart, they act according to the plan, which, did they but know it, directs all lives." When men see this, they will gladly forego their former follies and misdirections to set in place the new and better relations, one to another, which will characterize the coming time. Thus will it be, thus will men step by step awaken their role in fashioning the new civilization. With Maitreya and his group in the lead, guiding and advising, no time will be lost in furthering the plans and blueprints which await implementation. In due course, all will be transformed and changed for the better. The outlines of the new dispensation will quickly emerge and inspire men to even bolder measures. Thus will it be. And thus will the great ones, your elder brothers of old, enter once more into the lives of men. And thus will men themselves take the next step of their path, a path which slowly and surely will take them to their source. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.